1968 was a very different time. Humans had been traveling into space for less than seven years. We didn't know when or even if anyone would ever set foot on the moon. With the hindsight of history, Apollo 8 may not seem like a major accomplishment, but every step of this mission was truly a first. The space race was on, and Apollo 8 was America's attempt to claim an important victory. This documentary, shown here with only minor edits, was produced in that very different time. Shortly after the return of Apollo 8, many months before the first moon landing. Here it is as it happened. December 21st, 1968, the shortest day of the year, but in significance, perhaps one of the longest in the flow of history. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We are still go at this time. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have we have liftoff. Liftoff at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have cleared the top. Tower clear, 13 seconds. The United States was undertaking the most distant voyage ever attempted by man. For the first time, three Americans rode the Saturn V moon rocket. to leave their cradle earth and face the infinite frontier. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo 8, you are go for TLI, over. Roger, understand, we're go for TLI. TLI, translunar insertion. This was the commitment. Borman, Lovell, and Anders were ready for the maneuver that would send them to the moon. As the world listened and watched, its people were overtaken by a new awareness, an awareness that they were perhaps witnessing the overture to the ultimate destiny of man. Lovell confirms ignition. And the thrust is okay, Booster says. On board the spacecraft, and in mission control, the men of Apollo 8 watched the readouts. Velocity build up in feet per second. The numbers snowballing toward the velocity that would allow the spacecraft to escape Earth's gravity. And Borman says we've got Seco. Cutoff was right on the second. With the cutoff of their third stage engine, Apollo 8 was traveling faster than had any men before a coasting uphill climb against the pull of their native planet. Now the third stage, the S-4B, was just useless mass to them. It was jettisoned, then later placed into an orbit around the sun. The crew of Apollo 8 turned around for a look. Hi, Houston, Apollo 8, how do you read? Yeah, loud and clear, Frank, how are you? Roger, we're uh, loud and clear. We're taking pictures of the S-4B. Uh, the uh, post-separation sequence is is uh, completed and we seem to have a high gain. Give us a clue as to what it looks like from way up there. Roger. I can see the entire Earth now out of the center window. 
I can see Florida, Cuba, Central America, the whole northern half of Central America, in fact, all the way down through Argentina and down through uh, Chile. Hey, you picked a good day for it. Houston, for information, I'm looking through the scanning telescope now, and I see millions of stars, most of them uh, the venting from the S-4B. The crew of Apollo 8 now settled down to the routine of the outward flight. Systems checks, observations, navigational star sightings. Uh, Jim, uh, I've just been uh, looking at your, your marks with respect to uh, accuracy, and they figure they're within uh, a couple thousandths of a degree of the uh, theoretical optimum. Lovell's proficiency in navigating the spacecraft with its onboard optical instruments would eventually earn him the nickname, the man with the golden fingers. His speed was such that he would be requested to slow down so that the earthbound machines recording the data could keep up with him. The accuracy of his sightings was virtually flawless, symbolic of the entire mission, a mission so accurate that several of the planned mid-course corrections would be dropped as unnecessary. Astronauts, spacecraft, flight controllers, computers. The precision was fantastic. Then on the second day out, the world looked in on the crew via television. This transmission is coming to you approximately halfway between the moon and the earth. We've been uh, 31 hours, about 20 minutes into flight. We have about uh, less than 40 hours left to go to the moon. So Apollo 8 glided on silently, farther from Earth than man had ever before been, a microscopic dot of life in the cosmic void. Around the world, in Goldstone, California, Madrid, Spain, Canberra, Australia, the gigantic antennas of the deep space network tracked Apollo 8, received its communiques, picked up the voice of its telemetry. Only for the 40 minutes of its transit behind the moon on each orbit would Apollo 8 lose contact with Earth. Then, on the day before Christmas, the network zeroed in on the spacecraft television antenna for the second broadcast to Earth. Right, you're all looking at yourselves as seen from 180,000 miles out in space. Mike, what I uh, keep imagining is if I'm a, some lonely traveler from another planet, what do I think about the Earth from this altitude, whether I think it'd be inhabited or not. Don't see anybody waving, is that what you're saying? Well, I'm just kind of curious uh, whether I would land on the blue or the brown part of the Earth. You better hope we land in the blue part. Shortly after they turned off the television camera, Borman, Lovell, and Anders ended their long climb away from Earth. Crossing the point where the gravity of Earth and Moon just balanced, they became the first men to fall toward another celestial body. Now the time approached for the most immense commitment of the mission, Lunar Orbit Insertion, LOI. A burn of the service module engine would place Apollo 8 into orbit around the moon. Up to this time, without further major maneuvers, the spacecraft would loop around the moon and return to Earth. Once the burn was made, Apollo 8 would be held by the moon's gravity field until a later burn would push it free. Apollo 8, this is Houston at 6804, your goal for LOI. Okay, Apollo 8 is go. Uh, you're riding the best bird we can find. Lunar orbit insertion would take place on the backside of the moon. With the moon between the spacecraft and the Earth, all contact would be lost until it appeared on the other side. In mission control, they anticipated LOS, loss of signal from Apollo 8. Now, Mission Control and the world could only wait. Wait for the first contact with Apollo 8 as it emerged from behind the moon. We've got it, uh, we've got it. Apollo uh, 8 now in, in lunar orbit. Uh, there's a chair in the, this room. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, uh, switching now to the voice of Jim Lovell. 